The holidays are time spent with our loved ones. It has been imprinted in our psyche from a young age. Holidays mark the passage of time in our lives, a milestone we share with each other, and they generally represent time spent with family. But what if you don't have family or a close loved one to spend the holidays with? Our partner has passed away or our family has moved. How do we handle this time of year? Well, welcome to Your Health. I'm your host, Lisa Hart. Today, I have Becky Lomaka, who has a master's degree in counseling psychology and a certification in thanatology. We're going to talk about grief and how you can deal with it during the holidays. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much, Lisa. It's great to be here today. Now, in my opener, I talked a lot about a variety of different things as to why somebody might grieve uh, during the holidays. Mm -hmm. But before we get into any of that, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, as you had mentioned, I am the I'm a, a grief specialist. So I went to college master's program for counseling psychology and started out working with with older adults and primarily depression and transitioned my work into working with people who are grieving, which prompted me to go back and get the specialty certification in thanatology. And in 2013, I joined the staff over at O'Connor Mortuary. The O'Connors um, had the foresight to see the need for this in our community. And so really that's my, my whole world at O'Connor. I work alongside not only the grieving families, but our healthcare professionals, our hospice professionals, our faith communities to um, educate them on how to come along somebody who is dying or someone who um, is grieving the death of a loved one. Is that pretty unique, like you mentioned? I mean, obviously, uh, O'Connor Mortuary thought, okay, we needed to have something like this. So is it lacking in, in, in our space uh, for this type of thing? It is. It's, it's very unique. There are very few funeral homes across the United States or really across North, North America who, who have a person um, like me in this position, yet the O'Connors really felt that this was something that was needed in a way that, um, that they wanted to give back to the community for the, the blessings they've been given in their lives. So at what point, I mean, I know you mentioned that you were working with older adults at the time, and then once you have gotten a certification, you know, I guess my question is, it takes a lot to listen, and it takes a lot to have uh, the empathy, and, and, and people come to you and they're so upset and so sad. How do you deal with that? Well, you know, we, we get this question a lot. How do you do, deal with all of the sadness? And um, there is certainly sadness, Yet there's also a sense of um, it's a gift to walk alongside, by, alongside somebody during this, this really difficult path that they're on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we all learn how to, we, we hold that sacred space. Right. Um, that being said, um, we, we have to have ways to deal with everything, all of the emotions that are um, given to us by other people. So. We do a lot of self-care. I do a mm -hmm. lot of self-care. It's really important for me to, um, to take care of myself, right. to go do fun things. Um, you certainly, in, in our world, realize that every single day is a gift. So exactly. uh, making sure we make the most out of life. Exactly. And so that will bring me to the time of year that we are. The holidays are upon us. And of course, uh, a tough time for many people, as I had mentioned in my opener. Maybe someone has passed away, a family has moved away. Mm -hmm. You know, why is it this time of year makes it so difficult? Well, I think you said it in, in the opening. You said the word milestone. And when we think about the holidays, think of your childhood memories. Think about us raising our children um, and the traditions that we have with family. Typically, holidays are tied to family. Mm -hmm. And so it could be you've recently lost a loved one. It could be 15 years that you've lost somebody. It could be 20 years that you've had somebody important in your life die. Um, and because these are milestones, mm -hmm. that twinge, that twinge of sadness, sometimes even we can go on just fine and we've, we've integrated that loss into our lives, but this time of year, we remember those milestones and we mm -hmm. remember those moments with that person and, and we miss that person. We miss right. that person dearly. Right. Uh, you know, with, with COVID, we had to learn how to adjust 
and adapt. Mm -hmm. yes. Same kind of thing, right? Exactly, same kind of thing. And it was really a double whammy for us this past yeah. year. I know you and I were talking a little bit about, you know, before we went on air about kind of losing that year and a half. And last year especially, um, people were grieving mm -hmm. and they were isolated. Yeah. So not only were they grieving this loss, yet they had nobody to reach out to. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on, about that isolation. Okay. Uh, you know, let's get a good uh, feeling and understanding of what grief really is. Sure. Grief, you know, as you can see on the screen, grief is a normal and natural response to our loss. Mm -hmm. um, all of us who have experienced grief in our life, what do we want? We want it to end. Mm -hmm. It's painful, it hurts, um, yet what we know about grief is it never really ends. The edges tend to soften over time, um, that pain lessens over time, um, yet it lasts as long as it lasts. And there's, when you think about grief, there's a, think about somebody you love dearly who you have lost. We never really want to stop grieving, right? We never want to forget that person. Right. Um, yet what we do is we learn to enfold it into our lives, mm -hmm. carry on, find moments of joy again, and move that person with us through our grief journey. That's a, that's a great point because I, I remember that my uh, aunt, when she passed away and my mother passed away, my cousin and I would always talk about the little things of reminders of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I saw her name or something that she's, she's reaching out or you would, you would start to think yes. that those things would happen. But then also you would maybe cheers that person at the dinner table when you were celebrating a holiday. You say, you know, we miss, we miss mom so much, but, but cheers to her. And then cheers you move on, like mm -hmm. you said. So, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you are grieving uh, the loss, it's only one of many stages that you go through, right? Well, and when, um, when we think about grief, we do think about it as a really fluid process. So people have talked about, you know, we've all heard of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and her five stages of grief. Mm -hmm. And actually when, when she was writing her book and doing her research, she was working with people who were dying. And her, her book, her studies were on five stages of dying. Oh. Over time, it kind, of, it kind of got transposed in these stages of grief. And really over the past 30 or 40 years, we've seen grief as much more fluid. Not that you don't feel some of these things, not that you don't feel anger, maybe mm -hmm. sometimes you don't feel denial, but we're really careful about talking about it in that stepping stone process. And the biggest reason is we don't want people to feel like they're doing it wrong. Mm. I mean, we all grieve really differently. Um, that's why I love this, this grief model or this um, compass model of grief. Um, Dr. Bill Hoy at Baylor University uses this model. And you talked about it when you talk about doing the toast or saying the person's name. And this is something that we all do really naturally. You see mm -hmm. at the top of the compass, the word remember. And that's really the story telling part of our grief, right? We share stories. Mm -hmm. And when we share stories, we talk about the character qualities of that person. So that's something we're bringing with us. Again, how do we move forward in our grief? We bring those character qualities with us. Mm -hmm. And then you see the word reaffirm, and that's the meaning making part of grief. Now you see the word spiritual there. Not necessarily religion, it could be but that spiritual aspect of grief, how do I make meaning of this death? Okay. And then you see the word realize, and that's coming to terms with the reality of the grief. How do I, I I'm in disbelief. How, I can't believe that this has happened. Mm -hmm. And coming to terms with the reality, and symbols really play a huge role in that. And then really coming to terms with the, the magnitude of the pain that I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. At the bottom of the screen, you see the word release. And that's how do I say goodbye to the relationship as I knew it, let can, yet continue on with this bond. Again, we never, we never completely left, let go of this person, right? right? They're not here with us physically, but how do I continue on to this relationship? And then in the middle, you see the word integrating. And as you said, that's really what it's about. We never recover from grief. Mm -hmm. You know, just like if I lost a limb, I wouldn't grow that limb back, at least not yet. You know, who knows <laughs> what medicine will do for us in a few years. Um, 
but I learn, I learn to move forward without that arm, right? I integrate that loss into my life. And it's really the same thing with grief. It is a process of adaptation. How do I take this horrible thing mm -hmm. and integrate it into my life and move forward? Yeah, I mean, well said, and I, I did not realize that there were so many different aspects to it, so I'm very happy that you were able to point that out. So what I'd like to do now is I'm going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to have uh, tips for coping. So Great. Uh, just hang with us. All right, when we return, we will uh, identify some tips for you during the holidays and any time that can help you deal with grief. We'll be right back. I'm Jerry Slusowitz, founder of Pacific Financial Planners. Did you know that one simple mistake can derail your retirement plan? By not making the shift to income-based investing, you could be setting up your retirement plan to fail. If you're at or near retirement age, time is not on your side. One major stock market correction could wipe out your life savings. Visit safeincometoday.com to make the switch. Create retirement income you can count on. Two in three Alzheimer's disease patients are women. If you or your loved ones are experiencing symptoms of memory loss or confusion, call our clinic today to schedule a free screening. At Tilda Research, you will work with distinguished physicians and researchers like Dr. Ken Deck, who has served the Orange County community for over 40 years. We offer patient stipends and free transportation. Call and schedule your free screening now. Welcome back. Well, today I'm joined by Becky Lamaca, and we have a second half for you regarding tips on how to handle grief during the holidays. Well, Becky, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate the first part of what you went through. You educated us on what grief is, what it isn't, and how to, you know, process it and integrate it into our lives. But now I'd like to go a little further and, and maybe a more happier subject matter is, you know, let's talk about some tips and things that we can do to, to help do that integrating mm -hmm. and to understand uh, how to deal with the grief during the holidays. So what are some of the, the top things that you would recommend? Well, I think, and you can see on the screen, some of the things that we'll, that we'll walk through um, the second half of the show, I really do think it's possible to not just survive but actually, actually grow through our grief during the holidays. Um, it's possible, and, and I hope these are really practical things. These are things that every single one of us can do, whether, again, you've lost somebody 20 years ago or you've lost somebody just in the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things that we can do is admit the holidays are hard, right? Yeah. I mean, holidays are hard on a good day. You yeah. know, when everything is going well. I mean, I have, I have two sisters-in-law who are, you know, they're already wrapping presents. And I'm thinking, are you wow. kidding me? I haven't even thought about purchasing presents yet. Yeah. So when, when things are going well in our lives, the holidays are hard. And then you add your grief on, the top, on top of that. What is just really could, could normally be manageable can really seem overwhelming. <sighs> So one of the things is just to acknowledge that this is hard. And you see on the screen, it said, don't should yourself. Don't should on yourself. You know, it's, it, <laughs> shoulda, I woulda, should coulda, be, right? yeah, shoulda, yeah. woulda, coulda. And be conscientious, like really focus on your mindset when you're starting to, oh, I should be, I should be, have these presents, I should be that, to stop yourself and say, you know what? It's okay, I'm gonna give myself a pass on this. Oh, that's, that's mm -hmm. forgiving yourself for sure. And you mm -hmm. know, stress plays such a huge, part uh, during the holidays that, like you said, it's just going to exasperate the grief that you're already feeling. What else? Well, give yourself the gift of anticipation. So we say, make your list and check it twice. <laughs> and that's literally taking out your calendar, taking out your phone, and marking the days on that calendar that you know are gonna be most difficult for you. Mm -hmm. And it's different for every one of us, right? Maybe it's Thanksgiving because I always hosted Thanksgiving at my house and my spouse did all of the cooking. Okay. Maybe it's New Year's Eve, maybe it's Christmas, maybe it's you know the start of Hanukkah. I, I don't know what it is for each person because it's very different, 
but mark that on your calendar. Just by simply circling it, marking it on your phone, it kind of sucks the wind out of it. Oh, and we're acknowledging that, you know, we're not trying to, like a lot of times what I just want to think about it, I want to scoot it under right, the rug and right, I want right. to forget about it. And it's actually the opposite. So if mm -hmm. we anticipate and we mark those days ahead of time that right. we know are going to be hard, mm -hmm. it sucks the wind out of it. And for those of us who are coming alongside somebody who's grieving, you can also anticipate, oh, I know this is going to be the first Thanksgiving. It's going to be really tough or it's going okay. to be the, the first Hanukkah without this person. I'm going to shoot a little text or I'm going to give a phone call. Yeah. Well, that, gosh, I, I totally hear what you're saying. I, I just am saying that my father, when we lost my mom, it was so hard for him. So mm -hmm. I, I think we did acknowledge it, but maybe not as blatant as you're saying to acknowledge it. It was more of a softer approach. Mm -hmm. Does it matter what, what the individual is, how they're dealing with it, but the way that you approach it, or do you always go by the same factors? Um, I, it, it depends on the individual. You know, if we're coming alongside somebody, we may reach out. They might not respond right away, mm -hmm. but we know, you know, I, typically they really appreciate that, that okay. you've done that. Okay. Um, and then we talk about considering the cost of withdrawal. Again, we want to sweep it under the rug, hop into bed, throw those covers over our head, yeah. and wish for January 2nd, right? Mm -hmm. And as much as we want to do that, one thing we do know is in every society since the beginning of time, we don't let our grieving go it alone. Right. So as hard as it is, we need to lean into our grief and we need to move toward people. Okay. Now that being said, it's okay to renegotiate the rules. <laughs> you know, I always do dinner at my house. You know what, maybe this year, I'm not up for doing it at my house. I'm going to go to friend's house, mm -hmm. and I'm going to stay for an hour. I okay. might not want to stay for the whole thing, so renegotiate the rules. Lean toward people, but do it on your terms. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's good because you could sort of test the waters, you yeah. know, by saying, okay, I'm only going to go for an hour, uh, and if I don't feel comfortable, I'll leave. Or you may up, end up staying longer. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And now this is, this is a good one, creating something new. Yeah, creating something new. You know, we talked in the beginning of, of the show today about the milestones, right? Mm -hmm. um, so many milestones around the holidays, so many traditions, and sometimes those can be really painful. So create something new or take this tr tradition and put a new twist on it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was just talking with a friend whose brother died recently and um, there were four boys in the family. One of the brothers died, and the three brothers got together for breakfast, and they sat at a table for four, and they had the empty chair. So we can do that during the holidays, right? We can have the empty chair. We can light the candle in remembrance of somebody. Maybe we, we change it up. Maybe we go and volunteer at a soup kitchen um, the morning of, of one of the holidays that you've circled on your calendar that's mm -hmm. going to be mm -hmm. a little more difficult for mm -hmm. you. So it's OK. Um, we can weave these, these milestones um, into our holidays and make them meaningful for us while we're also experiencing new things. I've heard some people say, you know what, I'm going to go on a cruise. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to take my best friend and we're mm -hmm. going to cruise for the holidays. Right. Does that mean that you're not remembering and loving and missing that person? Absolutely not. Right. It means that I need to try something different. Right, change it up mm -hmm. a little bit because then it might not be as hard. Uh, yet, like you said, you're not completely forgetting mm -hmm. the individual. Now, this is this is it. You know, many people uh, do have religious beliefs, uh, not so much spiritual, but but they're more of a religious base. So they do tend to follow whatever religion that is. However, when you talk about spiritual roots, where where are you drawing that strength from? Well, when we think about about the holidays, so the holidays are really tied to they they're tied to our spirituality, right? Whether, whether it be religion or just the family traditions that we have. So one of the things, again, just like we lean into our grief, one of the things that actually helps us feel better is to refocus our spiritual roots, whatever that may be for you. Maybe it's going to temple with a friend. Maybe it's taking a walk on the beach. Maybe it is volunteering at some place. Your loved one died of cancer and you're giving back via hospice 
or doing a 5K walk for cancer. So tap into that, that, those spiritual roots. And um, what that does is that helps us restore that balance. We know with grief, it's not only emotional, mm -hmm. you know, it's physical, it's social, it's all of those things. And by leaning in to that spirituality, again, mm -hmm. however that looks for you, mm -hmm. helps to restore that balance. That, that's awesome. Uh, one other thing, that, now you said leaning in. The next is taking care of yourself. Now you had mentioned to me off camera that you're taking care of yourself. You have different avenues away from your work. Uh, other people may want to do the same. So what do you suggest in terms of taking care of yourself? What are some things they should keep mm -hmm. in mind? Well, we need to think about moving our body, eating well mm -hmm. most of the time, <laughs> And getting proper sleep. Yeah. Um, sleep is such a huge thing. And when we're grieving, um, sometimes we're sleeping too much. Yeah. So it's maybe forcing ourselves to kind of get out of bed and get into a routine. And a lot of times, especially at night, we can have nightmares. Our mind is wandering. So we sleep really poorly during the night. Yeah. Um, and so then we're sleeping all day and really focusing on trying to get back into that natural habit where we're sleeping at night and we're awake during the day. So rest is really important. And then again, find that balance. What can you do that it gives you a moment of joy? Even though you're grieving, is it maybe going out and looking at, at the lights or going and catching a play with a friend, um, going for a swim, mm -hmm. joining one of the clubs here? Um, yeah. Find something that, um, that will help bring, bring that balance. And that's another thing. It's okay to feel joy while we're grieving. Right. It is okay. I think, I think a lot of people feel bad mm -hmm. uh, many times. So it's, it's nice that uh, we have permission. We have permission. To have joy. Yes. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. Now, you have an event that's coming up, and I just wanted to let the audience know that if you happen to be watching the show after December 9th, there will be other opportunities for this type of uh, talk uh, in the future for 2022. But as of right now, tell me a little bit about this event that you guys are having. Here. Yes, this is going to be a, a great event at the Florence Sylvester Senior Center, newly reopened mm. after having to close down for a while. And um, you'll hear you'll hear some of these same tips, but we're just going to go into a little more a little more in depth on on some of these things and um, be able to dialogue with people who are in the audience about what's working for them, what isn't working for them, some of the struggles that they're experiencing with their individual grief grief and again how can we not just survive these holidays but how can we grow through them right right and you know in closing let's kind of uh, talk a little bit about more of the joy you know we mm -hmm. we want to be able to celebrate and enjoy our family uh, and friends uh, during this time and you know just a couple of final thoughts for for our audience well I think it's important for us to remember that it's not all or nothing it's not either or we can be grieving and we can feel moments of joy. It's an, it's an and, not an or. Um, and that's okay. Too many times we feel guilt. And to know that part of our grief is to take this person with us. And this person is with us as we're experiencing joy and as we're in the, the depths of our our most heartbreaking grief. Mm -hmm. um, and then remembering other special days. The holidays are particularly hard, yet knowing that there are other special days yes. um, that are meaningful to you individually, same thing, recognize those, mark those on your calendar, lean into people to help you through those difficult days, but be okay with reneg renegotiating the rules. Right. Um, and know when it's, when it's time to get support too, beyond, beyond friends and family. We're right. so blessed here to have a wonderful social services department, um, and it's okay to reach out to them. They are full of resources to help people. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. you spending the time with us. Thanks so much. Enjoyed being here. All right. And happy holidays to you. Same to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for watching Your Health. I'm your host, Lisa Hart. And please join us next time as we learn more about your health.